Um, okay, so, so, so today is a, this is, as, as I said, is a, is a talk about C0 symplectic and to some extent contact to, topology. And, and so um, I'll start by writing down three theorems, sort of quick, say classic theorems in, in C0 symplectic topology. Um, so let's say um, omega is a symplectic manifold. Um, so the, the, the founding statement of, of the subject is, is the L.A. ashberg gromov theorem. I think the, I think the right date on this is, is 1983. Um, that, that, that says that, uh, yeah, sometimes it's called rigidity. Um, that, that, that says that if I have a sequence in the symplectomorphism group of, uh, of, of M omega, um, and if that sequence C0 converges to, um, to some map which happens to be a diffeomorphism, um, then psi is, in fact, a, a symplectomorphism. Um, so of course, this is not obvious. I mean, you know, this, this just means that the pullback of, um, of omega by the psi-ns is, is, is omega, and, and this equation involves taking, part, taking derivatives of, of, of the psi-n. Um, and, but I only assume that C0 convergence. I mean, and throughout, C0 convergence means be, throughout it, I generally will not be assuming M to be compact. C0 convergence means convergence in the compact open topology on, on, on M. Um, so I mean, this condition is about the derivatives of, of psi n. And I'm not assuming anything about the derivatives in the, when, I, when I take this limit, though I am assuming that the derivatives of psi exist. And somehow, um, Eli Ashberg and Gromov proved, and, and I mean, we'll even see a different proof of this in some sense um, la later on, um, that although you can't sensibly take the limit of this equation, it, it continues to be true that psi star omega is, is omega. Um, so if I don't assume that psi is a diffeomorphism, then then it's not necessarily that. Then, um, then of course, it, I can't ask whether it is a whether it pulls back omega to itself because it, it might not have derivatives. Um, so accordingly, uh, we call just a, suppose psi is just a homeomorphism. Um, we call it we deem it to be a symplectic homeomorphism. Um, provided that there's a that, that there's a psi n that, that, that there's a sequence psi n of of, some, of genuine symplectic morphisms that, um, that that C zero converges to, to psi. Okay, so so you know for for example, just in R two you could take something like x comma y goes to x comma y plus f of x. Um, this would be a symplectic homeomorphism for any continuous function uh, um, f, even though even if f is not differentiable. Um, so you, you can very well pull back um, pull back the standard symplectic on R two. Um, but by by approximating f by, um, by by smooth functions, you would get a sequence of symplectic morphisms that um, that, that, that C zero converges to, to this to this homeomorphism. Um, so all right, so that, that's. The first statement I want to recall for context. Um, by the way, uh, I'll mention in passing that, okay, as I said, C0 convergence means com convergence in the compact open topology. Um, it's a fact that the homeomorphism group is a topological group with respect to the compact open topology. So in particular, for example, this formally implies that psi n inverse C0 converges to psi inverse as, as, and, and, and that the symplectic homeomorphisms form um, are, are themselves a, a topological group. Um, okay, so. So that, I mean that, that, that's a definition. You could you could argue that it's not a very satisfying definition in some sense because you know the uh, I mean, you, you you could try to say that symplectic homeomorphisms are the are the symmetries of C zero symplectic manifolds whatever that means, um, but uh, uh, normally when you you know. Well, the distinguishing feature of a symplectomorph of a genuine symplectomorphism is that it preserves something. It preserves the symplectic form, and, and so um, it. A, a, a natural question that is not answered by this definition is, is what is it that symplectic homeomorphisms preserve? Um, they're, they're just defined as limits of, of, of sequences at this point. Um, so 
one sort of answer to that question, uh, and I'm, I'm not claiming that it, to give any complete answers to that question, but one partial answer to that question is, is, is that if you have a simplex homeomorphism, it, it preserves capacities. I'm just mentioning that in passing. That's not, that's not going to be the, the, the focus of this. Um, but, uh, but I want to point out one thing that I will be discussing is, is something, something else that, that simplex homeomorphisms preserve. Um, OK, so, so the second sort of background theorem is a result of Ladenbach and Sikharov. Four, um, that's about the behavior of Lagrangian submanifolds in in um, uh, in the in the C zero world. So suppose I n from L into M are Lagrangian embeddings. Um, and the IN converge in C0 um, to I, where um, I from L to M is smooth. Um, OK, so, so again, this says that, I mean, in this case, it says L is half the dimension, and IN star omega is 0. So this is a statement about the partial derivatives of, of, of the IN. Um, but I only assumed that the ions converge in C0 to, to I, so, so you, can't, you can't just take the limit of this equation and say that I star omega is 0. But actually, by their theorem, you, you, you can say that. You can say that. that, that um, 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 then I is also Lagrangian. Um, well, except I haven't put in hypotheses. Um, so for this theorem, unlike for that theorem, one requires various topological hypotheses. And one, one topological hypothesis that you definitely require is that I be, or at least that the proof definitely requires, um, is that this L needs to be a, needs to be a closed manifold. Um, Compact and 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 without boundaries. So so, um, so that that up there is a local statement. This is this is not a local statement. It, it, it requires some amount of some amount of global structure to make to make their argument go. Um, I, and there there are, there are topological hypotheses beyond these. I don't want to, at least in their paper, I don't want to focus on that. But um, but I mean the easiest case is if pi two of m comma l is is zero, and then and then it also works if um, if m is is Euclidean space, and, and regardless of of, of pi 2 of m comma l. Um, OK, but, but again, this is, this, is, this is a global statement, unlike that. Um, so OK, and then, the, and then the third result, which so can I, can I ask a question? Yeah. If, if the limit is a smooth embedding, do you still need those global assumptions? Yes. As far as we, as far as we know, yes. We, we, um, I, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think I know a counterexample, but, um, but, but the proof definitely, definitely means that. Um, um, yeah. Okay, so the third result, which is maybe you know more directly the motivation for for the rest of the talk, um, is a more recent result of Miller, Leclerc, and and Safedini, um, that that says. Um, It says, suppose uh, psi from m to m is a symplectic homeomorphism. Um, and suppose I have a co-isotropic submanifold C of, of m. Um, and then the statement is that if, well, so look at psi of C, of course, it's just a homeomorphism, so psi of c might not be a smooth manifold. I mean, basically, I want to say that psi of c is a co-isotropic submanifold, and that that's true as long as it's a smooth manifold. So I can even ask the question. So if if, if psi of c is um, is smooth, uh, then it's also co-isotropic. Um, 
So, um, okay, so, so know, let's compare these. Um, so, so an example of these ins might be, you know, you, you take the, you take a, one of these approximating sequences to, um, to psi, and, and you you pick a, you pick a Lagrangian submanifold, you pick a Lagrangian submanifold of, of um, pick a Lagrangian submanifold of, uh, of, of M, pick a, pick a symplectic homeomorphism, which has a certain approximating sequence, and then, and then you take I n um, equal to psi n restricted to, to L naught. Okay. So that, 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 that's certainly an, an example of, um, of this. Uh, that, that, that's some setting where, where these overlap. Um, so, but on the other hand, and in, in here in the, in the, the sense in which this is more general is, is that I don't require my approximating embeddings to, to, to come from an ambient symplectic homeomorphism. I just, I, I just ask for the embeddings. Um, the, the sense in which this is more general, well, I mean, for one thing, it says co-isotropic instead of Lagrangian, but maybe that's actually less fundamental than the next thing I'm going to say. Um, the, the, the other sense in which this is more general is that um, yeah, this is, again, a local statement. I, didn't, I, I don't require closure or anything like that. This is, um, um, whereas that's, that's more global. And actually, you can infer the, um, it's not too difficult for reasons that, that may appear in a few minutes to, to say that as soon as you prove this theorem for the Lagrangian case, and you approve it, and it's a local statement, you can pretty quickly get it for the, for the general co-isotropic case. Um, Okay, so, so you know th this this leaves things for close. For example, is there is there an analog of, you know, even if you assume compactness, is is there an analog of, of this statement for co for coisotropics? I think that's that's currently not not known. Um, so, um, so so the, the the goal of this talk is to tell you a new way to a new and I think simple way to prove this. And leverage the what's what's learned by that by that simpler proof to to say things about about contact analogs of 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 of, of this statement. Um, though I won't completely prove a, comp, a contact analog of, of that statement, and I think it's it's still a, an interesting question. So the goal is um, give a simplified proof of this thing. Um, and um, discuss contact variants of it. Okay, so um, I think the, the simplified proof breaks, it breaks down in the, the outline of it is is, is fairly simple. Um, Um, so, it has two parts, one of uh, which will use a term that it, one of, well, both of which will refer to a term that I haven't defined yet, and I will define that term term shortly. Um, but the two parts are, are as follows. Um, so, a smooth submanifold M, or uh, uh, say so. so of M is coisotropic. So I'm going to give a a characterization of coisotropy that does not refer to tangent spaces, um, and I, I'm I'll define that in a couple minutes, um, but I'll, I'll name it now. So so it's coisotropic if and only if it is um, locally rigid, um, and then the second part of the proof is that uh, whatever this locally rigid means, it, it means the point of it is that it is a property that is manifestly invariant under, under symplectic homeomorphisms. Okay. Um, Okay, so so if you, if you trust that I'm going to do these two things, you should agree that I'm that I that I will have given a proof of uh, uh, of this theorem. So, um, 
So suppose I have a symplectic homeomorphism and a coisotropic submanifold, um, then that submanifold is locally rigid according to one. Um, therefore, psi of the submanifold is locally rigid according to two. Therefore, psi of the submanifold, given that it's smooth, is, is will, will, would be coisotropic. Um, okay. So so. What I then obviously owe you is, is a statement about what the definition of this term. Um, so, um, okay, so, so I mean, lo, 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 local rigidity, I said, was not going to depend on the tangent space to the subset. In fact, it, it, you know, it will ultimately be a definition for that you know, applies or does not apply to. to any locally closed subset of your sub of, of, of M. Um, first, I'll say what rigidity is, and then I'll say what local rigidity is. Um, so, so I have a closed set C inside M. I'll say it's rigid if and only if the following holds. Um, so. Okay, so here's M. Here's C. Um, for every open set U that intersects C, so U is an open subset of M with U intersects C not empty. Um, so there's a picture of, of U. Um, there should be a positive number, depending on u, but not depending on anything that comes after. Um, so that um, if I, in order to remove u from c, I need to expend a certain amount of energy in, in Helmut's sense. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, delta energy in, in Helmut's sense. Okay. So, um, for, so for every um, H for every Hamiltonian, um, com every compactly supported Hamiltonian, um, whose time one map disjoins the closure of U from C, um, we have um, the integral from 0 to 1. Well, let's just say the max over m of um, of h at time t dt um, should be at least all. Um, okay, so so I, so I think about trying to move um, move you off, and then so that would result in it being over there, and and the statement is that it you know it. it it requires a certain amount of energy to, 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 to destroy. Um, you know, or uh, so you know, just to allow myself to use shorthand later on. Um, if phi is in ham m omega again, again, this is the compactly supported Hamiltonian diffeomorphism group, and um, phi of u bar intersects C is empty, forces um, the Hofer norm of phi to be bigger than or equal to delta, which is bigger than zero. Yeah. Um, okay, so so so, the, so this is the definition of, of rigidity, um, referring to uh, so so ignoring the word local, uh, uh, modulo the, the distinction between rigidity and local rigidity. I'm saying that. I am characterizing Lagrangianness, or more generally, coisotropy, by um, by saying that uh, that something is Lagrangian, provided that you can, um, provided that it requires some amount of Hofer energy to remove uh, to to disjoin any open set. From. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so what does locally rigid mean? Um, well, it's just like what you know, compare local compactness to compactness or something, right? So, so um, you know, topological space is locally compact, provided that. Um, you know, provided that every point has a neighborhood that is, well, strictly speaking, that has a sub-neighborhood that is compact, but, it, but 
Um, for, for some properties, as with, as with this one, it, 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 it suffices to say every point has a neighborhood that is compact, at least if you're in the Hausdorff setting. Um, so, so, so similarly here, a closed set is, or, or more generally a locally closed set, is locally rigid if every point has a neighborhood um, that is, um, if every point has a neighborhood in which the intersection of the set with the neighborhood is locally rigid, or, or is rigid. Okay. Um, so let's write that out. Um, so a local. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Right. So uh, locally closed C and M is locally rigid um, provided that for all points in my um, in my set there is a neighborhood W. Um, so that, well, I'll just say that C intersect W, so locally closed, just locally closed means that every point has a neighborhood is, is such that the intersection of my set with that neighborhood is closed. So I guess I, I want C intersect of W to be closed so that I can you know, use the prior, prior definition. Um, is closed and rigid as a subset of W. Um, OK, so, so in particular, as, um, as, as John just said, um, I'm going to say as a subset of W, um, well, my Hamiltonians over here are required, are required to be compactly supported. You know, so when I say as a subset of W, well, W is an open subset of a symplectic manifold. Therefore, it is a symplectic manifold. And I want a Hamiltonian for that symplectic manifold. And my Hamiltonians are required to be compactly supported. Um, so, um, so, so, or I want to think about Hamiltonian support, you know, so supported in that W um, that disjoint open sets from my, uh, from my set. Um, so, so in particular, the H's um, are supported, um, are compactly supported in W, or in, in interval cross W. Um, okay, so, so I mean, for for example, here's an inter here's a an open interval inside the plane, and it's a fact that that is locally rigid, um, because like if I have this if I have this here point, um, I can you know, draw an open subset. I can I can draw an open set around that point so that it so that it would, so that if I had a A smaller open subset that was contained in this point, it would require, you know, no, no matter what, no matter how small the open subset was, as long as it was, you know, inside my yellow subset, and um, and passed through the blue, uh, then it would require, then you know, it would take home a certain amount of uh, effort to, to remove this from, from there. Okay. Um, oh. Some example, there is something locally rigid, but closure is not. That is. Um, yeah, but, but, I mean, because I can, um, I mean, basically, I can just sort of move on. Uh, I can, I, uh, so, so there will be more exa elaborate examples later. But, but I mean, basically, I can, I can take a Hamiltonian that just slides everything off to the side there, and 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 you know, eventually it runs off. Um, okay, so um, right, so, so now now I've filled in somewhat more of the outline. Uh, the proof I, I, I need to, uh, if I want to prove this to you, and again, I, I'm asserting that this is a simple proof, um, and, or you know, simpler, but actually I would say like simple, um, you know, to, to the point that it is reasonable for me to try to explain the proof in, 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 in the time I'm allotted. Um, um, so what, you know, what, what I have to do is convince you that, um, you know, of, of two things, that if C happens to be a submanifold, a smooth submanifold, um, then this is equivalent to it being co-isotropic. Um, and that um, and that this notion is invariant under symplectic homeomorphisms. Um, yeah, both of which are are maybe believable. Um, so, well, I mean, uh, so I'll, I'll get to one later. But um, I mean, draw out, I mean, draw out what two the proof of two because this is actually you know as, as I said I also want to say something about analogs in the con contact setting, and, and this is the, the one place where things don't go over directly to, the co to, to prove things in the contact setting, but they go over part of the way, and, and, and this, will, this will get to where they go. 
Uh, or you know, how far they go. So, uh, I, I mean, so, so maybe just to keep notation down, I'll, I'll show that I'll convince you that rigidity is invariant under symplectic homeomorphisms. But if you believe that, then you probably believe the same thing for for the local statement. Um, Okay, so um, so assume C is rigid. Oh no, I do not claim to have proven number one. Okay. Uh, that, that's a little more elaborate, but I want to I I talk about two first. Um, okay, so so say I, I I start with something rigid, C. Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe don't bother drawing the maybe don't bother drawing M. Um, OK, so, so there is C, assume it's rigid. Um, and, uh, and I have some, some symplectomorphisms that C0 converge to a homeomorphism. Um, OK, so there's, there's my map psi. Um, it's only a homeomorphism, so you know maybe Maybe there is psi of C. Um, and OK, so I, so I want to show you that psi of C is, is also rigid. In other words, I want to show that it takes a certain amount of energy to disjoin any open set from, from psi of C. Um, well, I, I mean, this is, uh, this is not hard. Um, but, it, but, it, but again, it, it, it's instructive to see you know, the, the one place where things don't just carry over directly to the contact setting. Um, so, OK, here's, my, here, here's an open set, V, and I want to say that it takes a certain amount of energy to, to, remo to remove V from here. Um, so, so here's my, uh, V is open, at, and it at, at intersects psi of C. Um, so, so uh, OK, so, so, so suppose I get a V that, that you know, moves it off. Um, well, then straightforwardly, I can, I can conjugate and move an open set off of here. Um, so, so let's take the pre image of my open set V. So, what, I guess that's psi inverse of V. That certainly intersects C. And let's see if I can do this right. I believe psi inverse v psi of psi inverse of v bar intersect c will be empty. Um, okay. Now, well, this is just a homeomorphism, so maybe that's not so good. But 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 I uh, but it is approximated by symplectomorphisms, namely the ones given by conjugating the psi with psi n instead of of, of, of psi. Um, so for large n, it'll still be true, and this is yeah. Of course, it's technical, but I mean the reason I'm the reason I needed to put a bar in here is to make this work. For for, for sufficiently large n, it will still be true that the version of, the version of just this map with psi, with psi replaced by psi n will still disjoin this set with from C. Um, Um, OK, but then uh, or, wait, I, I probably put the inverse in the wrong place. There, that's better. Um, OK, but, but the statement that C is rigid means that that puts a lower bound on the Hofer energy of, of, of this. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so, so, you know, the, so the Hofer energy of this is bounded above by um, this constant that's only, that only depends on that set. Note that I didn't don't have an n in that set, um, which is positive. Um, okay, but so so what I need, and this is the place where things get a, get more thorny in the contact setting. Um, you know, what what I need is a is a lower bound for 
uh, for phi and not for psi and uh, psi and phi psi and inverse, uh, but the Hofer norm is conjugation invariant, as is, as is easy to see. So, um, so, um, so in fact, I have established a lower bound on the Hofer norm of any phi that does that. Yeah. So you're supposed to be, you're supposed to actually be convinced by this. This is um, this is not hard. Okay. Any, any questions about that? Um, okay. So so in the contact setting. It, 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 you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much time I will have to, to discuss the contact setting in detail, so, so I will, um, you know, briefly say something now. Um, in the contact setting, there's some kind of analog of the Hofer norm you can use, but it's not conjugation invariant, and that's why you don't get quite as sharp results. And, and that's sort of the, the, the only place where, thing, where things genuinely get more complicated. Um, okay, so, so I claim to have introduced a property that is indeed invariant under symplectic homeomorphisms. Um, Okay, so so now I, now I talk about number one, um, the statement that a so you know, the, this this definition here you can ask, uh, if you have any locally closed subset it is coherent to ask whether that locally closed subset is locally rigid or not. If that locally closed subset happens to be a submanifold, so why doesn't that definition um, oh, uh, right. So the defini so right the definition of local rigidity of C is that. If I have a set, if I have an open set, so, so, so it only depends on it only depends on this open set, which doesn't depend on it. Right. So, so I want to say that if my locally closed subset happens to be a smooth submanifold, then local rigidity is equivalent to coisentropy. Um, so, so here's the sketch proof of of number one in four parts. Um, which may or may not fit on this board. Um, so, uh, so that's an if and only if statement. So there are two things to prove: um, the backwards implication um, is is absorbed in the first of the four parts. Um, and so, um, So there's just an explicit construction, and if people demand it, I can say more about it. But it's it's pretty elementary, and you know, it was actually something I did some time ago. Um, so, so I guess we, you know, re really, I'm going to prove the contrapositive of the backward implication. Um, so in other words, so suppose you have a non-coisotropic submanifold, then then it's not locally rigid. Um, so if you have a non-coisotropic submanifold, then you can then there exists the following kind of thing. Um, there exists a point x and a, and a tangent vector v that is in the orthogonal complement of the tangent space, but not in the space. Um, and um, it, it you know gives me a neighborhood of x. And you know a sequence of arbitrarily small um, Hamiltonian diffeomorphisms. So by arbitrarily small, I mean arbitrarily Hofer small um, Hamiltonian diffeomorphisms, so that um, v of u bar intersect C is empty. Um, so what's the idea? I won't write it down, but the idea is simply: so if the, if this vector v exists, um, I can make a Hamiltonian that vanishes along C um, and whose directional derivative in this direction is v. Um, it will then also be the case that the Hamiltonian vector field at x is not in C. It won't be v. It'll be, but it'll be something you know complementary to v that still won't be in um, in T x C. And so, 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 so I have a way of taking Hamiltonian that vanishes along C and immediately flows off of it, um, or you know, immediately flows X off of C. Um, and then by playing games with cutoff functions, you can you, you can you can arrange for that to be to, to be over small. I, I mean, it, it's, it's, the bit with cutoff functions is slightly tricky, and, and, and I can talk about it if people want later. But 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 that's that, that's that's the outline. And it's it's totally elementary. It's it's not. Um, it's just a ball around X. 
Um, yeah, and, and I mean, you, if, if somebody if somebody gives you a W, I mean, strictly speaking, in local rigidity, there's a W. I mean, if somebody gives you a W, you can do everything supported in that W. Um, okay, so yeah, so modular details that I haven't said anything about um, that proves the backward implication. So the rest is is, is about the forward implication. Um, okay, so so the one piece of what could be called hard symplectic topology, at least you know, by hard, I mean in the in the Gromov sense, but you know, by contemporary standards, I don't think. I even I don't think I mean hard isn't difficult. Um, is, is the following, which I also did back in 2014. Um, so um, so suppose you know put some hypothesis on M to make it uh, to make holomorphic curves behave well like geometric boundedness, geometrically bounded. And um, and I have a closed uh, uh, I have a closed Lagrangian inside M. Um, then L is rigid, um, you know, hence locally rigid. Okay, so so I didn't have these words. I especially didn't have this word back in 2014. I had some some approximation of that. Um, but um, so, in other words, I'm saying that it, that it takes a certain amount of energy to disjoin a ball from from a Lagrangian. Um, you can maybe even guess. I mean, so, some people in this room could maybe even more or less guess how you do that. The, the convenient little trick is to instead of saying it takes a certain amount of energy to disjoin a ball from a Lagrangian, I'm going to say I'm going to find a little Lagrangian torus inside that ball and do some standard kind of floor theory type things. Though I don't. I mean, I don't define any floor homology groups. Um, to, to say that okay, I have I, I have my L. I have a little torus that transversely intersects. I have a little Lagrangian torus that transversely intersects L, and um, you know th there's there's a lower bound on the displacement energy of that other torus from 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 L. Okay. Um, okay, but that's about rigidity. Well, okay, and and I believe the way I've phrased the definition of local rigidity, it's somewhere, yeah, there. Um, it is manifestly the case that if you're rigid, then you're locally rigid. You can take W equal to M or something. I think that's the way I phrase it. You can just do that. Um, okay, so the the bit that's new are some very simple observations. Um, I mean, I, I did all this for you know five years ago for different reasons, and I, I, I did at the time. What I, were you trying to do five years ago? Um, what, what I, I was trying to explore the question of if you have a if you have a closed submanifold, is the you know, chikhanov hofer type metric induced on the orbit of that submanifold uh, non-degenerate or not? Okay. And, and sort of this shows that if it's not co-isotropic, then it's degenerate. Um, and this, shows, this is used to show that if it's Lagrangian, or more generally, if it is filled up by Lagrangians, but filled up by closed Lagrangians, then it's non-degenerate. Um, OK, so, so the, uh, I mean, somehow the new heart of the matter, uh, I mean, the new heart of the matter is in, in, this, in, is in the definition. And the observation that um, you know, the reason I call it locally rigid is because it's a local property. Um, and um, so, okay. So, so here's a statement about closed Lagrangians. But suppose I have any Lagrangian anywhere. Um, by the Darby-Weinstein theorem, or some version of it, a uh, little neighborhood of a point in that little Lagrangian looks the same thing, as, looks the same way as a neighborhood of your point in your favorite Lagrangian in your favorite symplectic manifold. Um, Um, to make this grammatical, local rigidity is local property. So the Darby-Weinstein theorem implies um, that local rigidity for any Lagrangian follows from local rigidity 
for, you know, for, for any Lagrangian that is locally isomorphic to it. Um, so, you know, so for example, for closed Lagrangians. You know, in CN or something. Um, or, or, you know, put, put whatever manifold you want here. Okay, so, so, so the point being that if I, you know, if I have this Lagrangian anywhere and, and I know that this Lagrangian over here is locally rigid, rigid well, a point here has a neighborhood that gets identified with a neighborhood of, with, of a point there by some morphisms, and, and so it's just manifestly the case that, you know, because, um, you know, because, I, get, because I get to choose my W, um, you know, to, to, be, to be small enough that, to be in the domain of a Darby-Weinstein chart, um, as, soon as, as soon as I prove that this model for it is locally rigid, then I've proven that it's locally rigid over here. Okay. Um, OK, and so I believe that completes the proof of one in the Lagrangian case, or you know, in the, in the half-dimensional case. Um, and, then I, and then I claim it's not that big of a deal to leverage this up to the co-isotropic case um, by the following simple observation, which, I mean, is surely not original for me. I, I think this is essentially, I think I've essentially found this in Abraham and Marsden before, I mean, I, well, I figured this out myself first, but then, you know, it's, in, it, it's an observation that has been made by many people, and you know, at least going back to like Abraham and Marsden, that um, if C and M is co-isotropic, and x is in c, then there is a Lagrangian, you know, not a closed Lagrangian, just a little Lagrangian, just a Lagrangian little chart, um, L so that x is in L is in c. Okay, so, you know, here's my, here's my c, here's my x, and I look at a little standard chart, um, and, and I realize that within that little standard chart I can find a uh, uh, I'll okay. Um, okay, and so um, and so the, the point being that okay by 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 C I've proven local rigidity for all Lagrangians, and it's not hard to see from the definition that um, that once I know that all of these L's that one that one might consider are are locally rigid, it follows that C is locally rigid. Um, Um, you know, it, if, if I want to destroy a ball from the red, it, it takes a certain amount of energy, and if I want to destroy a ball from the whole white, then it, then it you know, takes even more energy. Um, okay, and so I believe that I believe I've, I believe I've proven the theorem at this point, um, and that's it. Okay, so so, so um, you know the original proof involved properties of you know O's group of Hamiltonian homeomorphisms. I, I think this is. Um, I, I believe this is. Simpler and, and you know explicable and hopefully the first forty five minutes of the talk. Um, okay. Any any questions before I shift? If, if you preserve local rigidity, do you conjecture your uh, symplectic homeomorphisms? Well, uh, so there's always the annoying fact that m most things that are preserved by symplectic homeomorphisms are also preserved by anti symplectic homeomorphisms. Um, so. Um, so yeah, so, I, so so yeah, you know, maybe may, maybe you fix the statement to accommodate that or something, and it seems believable. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have I don't have a good idea for proving it. You know, but by, by the way, I should I, it's conventional to advertise the point that um, if you prove the miller leclerc sapedini theorem uh, just in the just in the Lagrangian case, then you ha then you have also proven the eliash gromov theorem because you can think about graphs of of uh, you, you can you, know, you can consider, consider the graph of psi and and um, if psi is smooth, then that graph is a, is a Lagrangian um, but which is equivalent to being a some part of morphism. By doing that, it's kind of like looking at Lagrangian because I, I guess you can probably recover the covering of characteristic points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking about it's close. So, so if, I think I think I need a tiny, uh, slightly larger hypothesis because I need I I want I want to say I'm gonna. I, I want to look at the graph of the characteristic foliation and, and the product and say that's a Lagrangian submanifold. I need to know that that's smooth. So like, I, 
uh, and so maybe the hypothesis isn't quite enough to get that. Like, if I assume that, I, I think it's enough if I assume that the restriction of psi to C is smooth as a map, and not just that the image is smooth. Um, but I mean, it, it is pretty close. Um, well, okay. So, so, so another thing that you're going to the clerk in C if you didn't prove it is that the psi maps the characteristic foliation of C to the characteristic foliation of psi of C. And so, um, so, so I think what, my argument doesn't quite do that, but I mean, it, it, yeah, by, by using the trick that I'm suggesting, I, or that I think I'm suggesting, um, the, the, if, if psi is smooth, then, then uh, if, if psi restricted to C is smooth, then, then it does work. Um, okay, so, so, so let's talk about the contact case now. Um, Um, I mean, so, so well, okay, the Miller-Leclerc Savidini example, which, or maybe the Viterbo example, really is is the graph of a, a, a of a um, of a one form that's closed in the sense of distribution, like a continuous one form that's closed in the sense of distributions, is, is um, w w would be something like this. Um, a union of two Lagrangians that intersect in a complicated way um, would also be an example. Um, I, I mean, surely there are other, you know, more insightful examples, but um, but perhaps nobody is uh, not not known to me. Okay, so so um, let's talk about the contact case now. Um, I guess all of this part of the talk points at things in the previous parts of the talk. Um, so suppose I have a contact manifold, say, 2n minus 1 dimensional, uh, with a contact distribution. I don't know. For just for convenience, let's say it's uh, the, the kernel of one form. Um, Um, so, okay, so, so I wrote down three theorems at the start, and let's talk about whether they're still true if I turn, if I replace symplectic by contact. Um, so that one is known to be true. So the, the analog of the Elias Bergromov theorem is true. Um, and that you know, if I have psi n, star, uh, so if I have some, so a conductive morphism is is um, a diffeomorphism of um, uh, of y that you know, preserves the contact distribution and therefore pulls back the one form to a multiple of it of itself, where where, where the f n's are are functions, um, and if the psi n convergence is zero to psi. Um, and and um, and psi happens to be a diffeomorphism, um, uh, then psi is a contact morphism. Um, okay, so, so so the names. So I mean, there's a paper by Miller and Spaeth that proves this. In the published version of the paper, they say that they were informed by Patrick Massot that that Benekin basically proved this. You know, back in his long paper on Le, on Legendre knots, um, in the case of R three, um, a long time ago, um, somehow this, this this he inferred this somehow from the existence of, a, of exotic contact structures on 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 R three that embed into the standard R three. I forget exactly how it worked. Does this always rely on the Gromov alternative? Yeah, as far as I know, I I do not. Yeah, I, I don't know a proof of that that doesn't rely. The Gromov alternative, you know, where, whereas in that case, I mean, I, I, I've given you a proof of that. It doesn't rely on the Gromov alternative. So, 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 so that's definitely a, a, a there's, there's space between, you know, how well we know that and how well we know that in some sense. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the Gromov alternative was known. Uh, well, oh, oh, okay. Does Benekin's proof to rely on the Gromov alternative? I think it does. I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't gone back and looked at, at Benekin's thing. I, I mean, I, I mean, the Gromov alternative was known before the 80s, I think, but whether it, whether it was actually written down for the, I'm not even sure it was written down for the contact case before, before this, that was probably known in some, in some sense. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, so, so, so that, that, the analog of that is, is definitely true. Um, the analog of the Laudenbach Siegerhoff theorem is definitely false, and, and it's not hard to see this. Um, so if I take the inclusion of any um, and minus one dimensional submanifold, um, it can be approximated by, by Legendrians. And, and, um, Um, I mean, the, the, well, the, I mean, the, so the standard thing to say is, is you know, here's um, here's my picture of a here's my picture of a random knot in 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 R in R three, and I'm gonna you know do some zigzags that that that, that, that approximate it, and, and you know, that's more or less convincing. I don't know if it's very convincing. Okay, it's not very convincing. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you know, I could arrange the slopes of the zigzags to to conform to the y coordinate. Um, and I mean, this is sort of an okay example, but in, in, in comparison to the other things in the talk, you, you might note that, that putting all these zigzags in wildly increases the thurston benekin invariant, um, which I mean, maybe you feel okay about, or maybe you, you don't, but for example, those blue things are not going to be all um, images of a fixed Legendrian under, uh, under a map. Um, but I mean, with Emmy's work, and I, I mean, I don't know, some of this could be extracted from things before that, but certainly with Emmy's work, like, um, it, you can even, if you take your Legendrians here to be loose, um, you can you can um, you can take your loose Legendrian. You, you, you can arrange for the in in, in dimension at least five. Um, you, you can um, you, you can approximate this thing by loose Legendrians, which are mutually a Legendrian isotopic. Now it's not clear; it probably is not the case that 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 what you get from that. Uh, that the Legendrians that you all get, all get from that are, are are images of a fixed Legendrian under uh, uh, under a convergent sequence of contactomorphisms, but but um, but you know with respect to the, what's actually said in the Laudmach Zero thing, that's just about the embeddings. Um, you know, the, this is very the things are very different in the, in, in the context of it. Um, so what, what do you demand the Legendrians are not loose? That's harder. I mean, there are you know there are statements. Like if you, um, to make sure I get the directions right, but I, I um, if you, like, like I think you can't, um, you can't, you can't approximate a loose unknot by the standard unknot. You, it, it, it is actually impossible. Rizal and 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 Sullivan showed, showed that. So so so. So that theorem is totally true for a non-loose. For a non-loose, uh, yeah, conceivable. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. If, 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 yeah. Um, if, if, right. If you restrict the IMs to be to be non-loose embeddings, then. Yeah. Um, okay. So. So I mean, I, I would say the analog of that we we, we don't know, and and I, th I think on some level, you know, this is argument in favor for it being true, and and that, and that's an argument against. Um, so I, mean, I guess first of all, I, mean, I have to say what coisotropic means. Um, I mean, you know, if, if you want to say, for, forget about coisotropic, let's just focus on Legendrians. So I, th I think that, that's um, that, that, that's probably okay. But um, so so the you know the general definition due to you know that was explored by Yang Wang is is that um, a coisotropic submanifold. Um, Um, it, it's coisotropic if w when you intersect it with a, with the contact hyperplanes, um, you get a coisotropic subspace of of the symplectic vector space given by 
by the that is that is the contact hyperplanes. Note that the, you know this intersection can vary with with p. Um, or the, the dimension of this intersection can can, can vary with p. Um, so so it was observed. I don't I don't think Wong wrote a proof of this, but but it was observed by Daniel Rose and Andrew Jung that um, that that this is the same as saying that R cross C is coisotropic in in this implexization. Um, so, in in view of that, um, what can be said is the following. Um, so, suppose you have your uh, your contact homeomorphism with this with this approximating sequence. Um, so, you know, there's a standard construction that you know, given given a contact homomorphism, you can sort of suspend it to this implexization, you know, by having it act on the R factor by di by division by the by, by the FNs. Um, and so, uh, you know, Rosen and Zhang observed that, that um, if the FNs uniformly converge, um, um, then, you know, in, in, in this setting, then, um, yeah, 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 so, so, so assume, uh, assume this and uh, assume, yeah, C0 convergence to the offense, um, then psi of C is coisotropic provided that it's smooth. Um, Okay, and and so, um, so what so what I can show based on this this not this different proof of uh, of their theorem is that um, um, the same holds um, under a weaker assumption on the FNs that. Uh, they, they just need to not not collapse, so, so that it, it, as long as the nth um, the nth of the FNs is um, is, is is positive. Um, so so how does the proof go? Well, I mean, it basically goes how the proof of oh, did I make a tactical error when I erased? Um, Okay, so 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 I must have erased the um, the proof of two. So um, the proof of one is essentially is very similar to that. The four steps on some level go through with a couple of uh, with a couple of asterisks. Um, so the explicit construction can just be borrowed and, and um, you know, goes through to show. Well, so, oh, okay. So so one has to say what, how do you define local rigidity? Um, well, in place of the Hofer norm, you use an uh, analog of it due to Igor Shalukin um, that, that basically just takes, uh, it, in the same way that Hamiltonians generate symplectomorphisms, Hamiltonians also generate um, contact amorphisms, and so, and so you just look at the max of the absolute value of the, uh, of the Hamiltonian. Um, the catch is that that depends on alpha, and related to the fact that it depends on alpha, it's not conjugation invariant. Um, so, um, Okay, and, and so you get a, you get a definition of local rigidity based on on this Lucan norm, and, and and using that one can show that coisotropy is is equivalent to maybe a slightly modified version of local rigidity um, along those lines. Um, so the the construction in A goes through. For B, one has to do some kind of floor theory in the symplectization. The statement is much less general, but it's it's okay for it to be less general. Um, so the, the statement that one can get is that if you have a, a hypertight Legendrian in a in a closed contact manifold, um, then that, then it's it's rigid in this Shalukin norm um, norm sense. Um, may, 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 huh? Yeah, it mean, means no no, uh, no homotopically trivial soft chords. Um, so yeah, like a. T 
tn minus 1 and t2n minus 1 work, works. Um, so, so I'm going to do some kind of fourth theory in the simplexation to prove that. And then you know, the nice thing about C is that basically you know, this, this Darby Weinstein argument says that I only need one, one example in any dimension, and then I've proven it in, 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 in general. And so that, you know, again, hyper tightness is a very strong assumption, um, but the, the, the existence of, one, of that one example can be transported over to, to an arbitrary Legendrian. Um, and D is strictly speaking false, but if I restrict to X being in an open dense set in, 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 in C, it's, it's true and that suffices. Um, the place where I need this is in the proof of two, because there was a step that I said, you know, I, I, I argue that cyan inverse psi cyan, um, that now with the Shaluka norm, is greater than or equal to some constant. And then I needed to get, but the thing that I need is, is to get the norm of psi greater than or equal to some constant. Um, well, if you're, if you're defining these norms using contact Hamiltonians, um, oops, uh, one of those, yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, um, if you're defining norms using contact Hamiltonians, then these are not going to be the same. Um, but how different they are is mediated by how big the Fn's are. Um, and so, you know, what, what can be said um, is that um, is, is that the Shaluka norm of the, of the thing that I need to lower bound is is, is bounded below by by you know inf of f n times the um, times the Shaluka norm of the thing that I can bound, um, and so and so if I if I assume that these infs don't don't collapse, then I then I then I get the estimate that's that's needed. Um, okay, so so I mean I think it's an interesting question, you know, whether whether you need this um, this hypothesis, but um, but in any case, this is this is the, it, it, it feels not great to um, to rely on an assumption about the conformal factor because I mean after all, the conformal factor is coming from the derivatives, and, 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 and you'd, you'd rather, rather not have that. Um, and and I mean just just the question of you know what what can um, you know, how can the FNs behave on a, in a, in a sequence of contactomorphisms that converges to a homeomorphism is also, um, yeah, I, I think interesting. Okay, but I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you.